Um, so I ended up in Humbayo. Um, I, it was pretty random, actually. I mean, I guess, so the summer before my sophomore year, before the course starts, I happened to um, take one of the sophomore college courses, um, which was taught actually by Bob Siegel, one of the human biology faculty. Um, members and I just kind of took it. It was about smallpox, which was like totally random and I was just like, this is kind of cool. This is like super obscure. What can I learn about smallpox? Um, but he wove the whole story of smallpox together in like such an interesting way that really showed how complex like eradicating any disease is, looking at the policy aspects, the biological aspects, the social aspects of disease eradication. And I thought that was a really, really cool way to study um, issues of health and healthcare. Um, but I still wasn't really planning on being a hum bio major, um, but my roommate at the time was like set on being a hum bio major because her sister had been one um, and she'd heard a lot about the program through her. So I went to the first day of the core um, with my roommate just to check it out, why not? Um, and they totally, it's totally typical of hum bio, but they just grabbed me by um, bringing up this concept of lactose on the first day of class. Um, and I think that's like, something that I've seen a lot through my home bio experience is that they take one concept and use it to make more academic concepts um, more engaging. So using lactose intolerance, which many people can relate to, to kind of explain um, the biological basis of that. I went to South Africa in the spring of my junior year. Um, because I really wanted to, after going to DC to study how healthcare is delivered at that, you know, very high level policy, um, in the very high level policy atmosphere, I also wanted to see how it's kind of delivered on the ground um, in these communities. Um, so I went to South Africa because the study abroad program there is very focused on community-based work, um, either service learning or community-based partnership research. Um, and both that, the overseas studies program and human biology actually facilitated my ability to um, start doing my honors research work in South Africa. Um, and so I kind of explored Cape Town for a while, learned about different organizations and kind of looked to see where there was a need in the community that perhaps I could help them meet um, as a volunteer researcher. Um, so I ended up working with this organization called Women on Farms Project, um, which is basically a very strongly feminist NGO that works to advocate for um, the rights of rural women who are living in the agric agricultural region outside of Cape Town. Um, and then I was also working with an academic partner at University of Cape Town on the Learning Network for Health and Human Rights. Um, and basically what they were interested in finding out um, and what I eventually turned into my honors research project was how, basically how, um, essentially the research question was what barriers do these South African farm women face when they try to access healthcare services in their community. And this was really important because um, the female farm worker population um, in this area is an incredibly vulnerable population with respect to their health status, with respect to their economic status, their educational status, whatever it may be. Um, and while the people that work with these communities know generally what the problems are accessing healthcare, it's never been documented. Um, so I basically spent the part of spring quarter and then the entire summer um, going around from farm to farm in the Cape Winelands, the agricultural region, um, basically sitting down with groups of farm women and saying, um, hey, what are your problems accessing healthcare? Um, and in this new healthcare system, what do you want to see? What will help you? Um, so I did focus groups with about 110 farm women and surveys with another 150. Um, and I brought that research that data set back to Stanford um, at the beginning of my senior year. And um, then I was like, okay, what do I do with all of this data? Um, but luckily Humbio is there to, was there to really kind of show me how to actually analyze my data because I'd never done an independent research project before. I didn't really know. Um, so I participated in the Humbio Honors College, um, which is during September, it's part of the September Studies Program. Um, and during that program, I kind of learned all about different methodologies for analyzing my data and for writing up my report. 
um, and made a plan as to how I was going to analyze this data. Um, and then I continued to work on my data set all through out senior year, um, taking a few more methodology classes, um, one in the human biology department about how to analyze qualitative research. Um, and yeah, I just finished my thesis and will be turning it in on um, Friday. Um, and Humbayo, again, is very generously um, is helping me go back to South Africa this coming summer um, to actually deliver the results to um, Women on Farms Project um, and kind of figure out with them how we can actually use these results to hopefully make political change. So um, it's, yeah, that's, it's a very cool experience. Absolutely. I mean, we saw a number of like barriers to accessing healthcare and utilizing healthcare. Um, one of which is just that the entire healthcare system in South Africa is so, there's such a big dichotomy between the public and private sectors. Um, in that, like the private sector serves, these numbers aren't quite right, but they serve, you know, 10 to 15% of the population, but get 80% of the funding, whereas the public sector, which serves almost everyone else, um, is getting, you know, the vast minority of funding. So that's actually really interesting because why this research was so timely was because um, South Africa right now is going through healthcare reform, kind of like what the United States went through last year, um, in that they're trying to establish universal healthcare coverage so that everyone has access to quality care, um, affordable quality care. Um, but the really interesting thing is you would think that, you know, the, the population that is getting better services would want to keep it that way to, you know, to make sure that they're secure, but actually most of the South African population supports this redistribution in the polls that they've done, supports this redistribution of wealth um, to all of the vulnerable people that need healthcare still. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting to think about where that kind of comes, comes from. Um, South Africa, especially since the apartheid years, has had like a very, very progressive constitution that's really based on like social solidarity and other concepts like that that you don't see in other countries, especially developing countries as much um, until they industrialize. Um, and that's really important because like, because we also did a survey, a quantitative survey, and for example, a lot of people said that waiting times were a problem, um, that they had to wait a really, really long time when they went to the clinic. So if we just had, you know, a survey that said waiting times are a problem, we might think, oh, well, there's not enough staff or, you know, there's or patient intake processes, whatever. Um, and both of those are true. But what we really got from the qualitative data was that there's also this huge issue of kind of favoritism and nepotism in the healthcare system, and that farm women feel that they have to wait for so long because the um, healthcare staff basically kind of discriminate against them and preferentially take patients from town. Um, before they take women on farms. And that, I mean, dealing with that problem is a whole different issue. Um, so I think that's like where the real benefit of qualitative research comes from um, and that you get these, these stories of how these processes work. Um, well, first of all, I think kind of the the decision of what's going to happen with this data and what it's going to be used for is not entirely up to me. <laughs> um, I think kind of the point of community-based partnership research is that you, you as the, as the academic partner, you go out and you do this research and then you bring it to your community partner and it's up to them to kind of decide how they want to use it because they understand their own situation more than anyone else ever can. Um, and I think it's, their prerogative to decide how that information is used. Um, but of course, we undertook this research um, with a pretty specific aim in that we wanted to figure out the answer to this question, what barriers farm women experience when accessing healthcare um, in order to optimize national health insurance implementation, the implementation of the universal healthcare coverage plan, um, which will be implemented starting this year. Um, so when I go back to South Africa, um, I hope that we'll be able to um, use the information to actually actively engage in political processes. So we're um, 
I and my partner organization, Women on Farms Project, will be attending um, the People's Health Assembly conference uh, together. And the cool thing about that conference, which is in Cape Town this year, obviously, um, is that the first few days of it are actually dedicated solely to looking at how to best implement national health insurance um, in South Africa. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that has been discussed a lot um, with respect to how the healthcare system should change is that a lot of people really do think that there should be a lot more community-based delivery of healthcare. Um, so that includes basically huge cadres of community health workers that would be going out um, so that the system hopefully the healthcare system would be able to reach more people. And when I talked to the farm women about this idea, they were actually pretty familiar with it because in the past mobile clinics have been a big thing in South Africa and they're just currently not as much. Um, and they were very open to the idea of community health workers coming out and delivering healthcare. So I think that's definitely a area um, that policymakers should look into much more. Um, and that's pretty well documented, I think, in our findings. Yeah, I mean, so obviously I learned a ton about, you know, the academic question that we were looking at. Um, that was the majority of what we discussed. But what was really striking was kind of the attitudes that these farm women had about their healthcare um, and about their own situation and that they were oftentimes very angry about the situation that they were in. And I don't know, I, I was very, I was happily surprised by, it just seemed that there were so many problems that were affecting these women that they told me about. So many different things that made it hard for them to access healthcare. Yet they were still so angry and hopeful and, you know, felt like they really did have the right to go out and demand what they needed and wanted. Um, and it was, it was just really interesting to see because I had kind of, I don't know, there were so many different factors that were kind of getting these women down with respect to their access to healthcare, but that didn't mean anything to them. And they were just so excited to talk to someone about it and try to make something happen. So one of the, the funniest parts of my experience um, doing research in Cape Town um, was the fact that I had to find a way to get out to all of these different farms, um, which are pretty geographically dispersed um, throughout the Winelands region. Um, so we go out every day um, with my, I had a bunch of college students from South Africa helping me um, as translators because I don't speak Afrikaans and the farm women all speak Afrikaans. Um, but I mean, first of all, I was, I had to learn how to drive stick shift, which I did not know how to do because they pretty much only have stick shift cars in South Africa. Um, on the wrong side of the road because they drive on the other side of the road in South Africa. So. Pretty much whenever I got into an interesting conversation with um, my coworkers as we drove out to these farms, I'd, without realizing it, kind of drift over to the normal American side of the road. And we'd, we're, you know, we're in these very rural regions, so there'd be no cars coming for a while. But finally, after about five to ten minutes, my coworkers would just be like, Amy, do you notice anything weird? Be like, nah, what's up? And they're like, you need to move or we are going to run into that car right now. You are on absolutely the wrong side of the road. Actually, I was very impressed by how Women on Farms organization runs their NGO. Um, among the different NGOs that I've kind of volunteered with um, over my time at Stanford, I thought they were very, very aware of kind of what the greater context that they were working within was and how they could best do that. And they have this huge membership of, they're really kind of a member-based organization and they're so responsive to what the women that they are serving need and ask for and talk about. And so they're, they're just working so closely with the community, but it was very different from, you know, working with the Department of Health and Human Services in DC or some of the other like higher level um, organizations 
that I volunteered with because they were just so in touch with what the problems were and I think that really made them a lot more effective when dealing with them so it definitely did kind of influence how I like in the future what level of the healthcare system I want to work at.